I like get Time Magazine, and there's a Time Magazine, Gun, Speech, Madness, Where Do We Go from Arizona? And in it, they asked a number of different folks, if you hadn't read it, what they thought about uh, the public discourse, political discourse in this country, is it leading to violence? That was essentially the question. And the guy that's the founder of the Daily Cost, which is a very liberal uh, blog, wrote, uh, when Glenn Beck spreads the latest insane conspiracy theory, well, then it's only a matter of time before people start getting killed. Is that civil discourse by uh, the Daily Cost founder? Or is that throwing bombs to just incite the other side? I think that's throwing bombs, and I've, I know some, a lot of the folks in the media, thank you first of all for covering and being in the media, but <laughs> that being said, I mean, Coast is a good example of this. I mean, I mean uh, somebody who has gotten notoriety from, from this, that style. And, you know, what was interesting is he was one who had a vote, he was very strongly, Gabby didn't vote for Nancy Pelosi for speaker, and Coase, I forget what he said, but it was a really coarse criticism of her uh, that uh, went over the top. And so he's done it, he does it on both, he, you know, he, he'll do it to Democrats too. I mean, that's just his style. And I don't, I don't find that to be particularly productive uh, to this, to, to what we're trying to accomplish in Washington. Go ahead, Jasmine. Well, we have to ask, why is it good business to elevate conflict? And who is it good business for? It is good business to sell newspapers, and I'm one of the few who still buys them. And it is good business for cable news and their advertisers to elicit these emotional responses. But we have to also remember that elections are very expensive. And it's good business for political activists to say that every day is a new emergency. Are you on any email lists where somebody emails you every day with a fresh emergency? Before President Obama even nominated his first Supreme Court justice, interest groups on both sides had already sent out their fundraising letters about why that person should be supported or opposed. So the question is, why do we allow elites, and I don't mean that in the traditional term, I just mean that the people in the media, in activist circles on both sides, and even among our representatives, who need the differences to prove who they are and who they oppose, why do we as the citizens allow that unless it actually does represent our differences? We not only allow it, we actually subsidize it. Because when Joe Wilson said, you lie, during the President's State of the Union message last, last year, within the next 48 hours, he raised a million dollars. When Alan Grayson, our, our nut job. Uh, <laughs> no relation. <laughs> Google alerts have not been fun. So. Well, actually, better now that he lost. But, uh. <laughs> But when he went down on the when he went down the floor as he did frequently and said the Republican health care plan is die and die quickly, uh, he raised about a million dollars in a week. So some politicians have figured out that the more outrageous, the more bomb throw bombs you throw, the better you do financially. Michelle Bachman so, on the Republican side. So he so hasn't so. had any, I don't think, equivalent to the you lie comment, but is known as a. Uh, you know, Bob bond thrower, and she raised more money than any Republican member of Congress last year, over seven million dollars, in a, in a uh, for a congressional race. Do you think Mitch McConnell will ever call out Glenn Beck or John Yarmuth will ever call out the uh, uh, Bill Maher um, and say, you know, what he just said is really stupid, and uh, from our side, they shouldn't say something like that? Should there should there be more politicians calling out their own folks who agree with them in the media um, and saying you shouldn't have said that? And if you know, I don't want to say blood on your hands, but if, if this if this sparks some a action by someone, it's blood on your hands. Well, I, you see it sometimes, uh, but, I, but I'll give you a good example of where, um, I forget what she said, but Sarah Palin said something in the aftermath of Tucson that Tim Pawlenty had a criticism. Tim Pawlenty the governor, was the governor of Minnesota until, the, until this year, and he's running for, he, he will run for president, he's not officially announced yet. And he had a slight criticism of Sarah Palin, and a, a day or two later, he kind of took it back because he, because of the blowback, uh, because he wants to be president. Um, I admired what he said, because he was right when he said it. And, um, and he didn't have to, and what, I, what he said was, I, was I respectful, it was respectful criticism. Uh, and uh, it's a shame to see somebody uh, do that. But he did stick his neck out, and he did say it. And, and I guess that's some level of progress. And that we're gonna have to do more of that. We're gonna have to call out more of our insights. I know you're wrong on this one. Not just members of the media, I mean our colleagues too. John. Well, I, I, there was a perfect example. I, I, yes, we, we ought to do that. 
Uh, there are things all the time where I think Ed Schultz goes way over the top and totally outrageous and mis misstates things. And, and I've been on his program, and I, I think um, I probably ought to call him out more. Keith Olbermann's gone now, so <laughs> Rachel Maddow never makes mistakes. I would <laughs> <laughs> never criticize her. But, but you, you've seen it, you saw it yesterday where um, uh, Eric Cantor, the, the um, majority leader in the House now, was on Meet the Press, and David Gregory kept trying to get him just to shout down, just to say, are the birthers crazy? And he, he hedged and hawed and said, I would, you know, basically, I ended up saying, I believe he's a United States citizen, that's all he would say. So, no, our leaders, both parties have to do that. Um, you know, Nancy, the other day, Nancy Pelosi, when Steve Cohen, my friend from Memphis, made the comments he did on the floor about the big lie and Goebbels and... What did he say? Uh, yeah, okay. He was on the floor, I think, Wednesday night, and um, just in a freewheeling discussion about health care reform and said, you know, what the Republicans do is they, they come up with the big lie, like government takeover or death panels, and they repeat it over and over and over, like Goebbels did. Goebbels, the propaganda minister for the uh, Nazi Germany, uh, who taught that was you know, the big lie. And he was roundly chastised, and Nancy called him out on it personally, just said, get over here, that's not what you should be doing. So we do it a little bit. We don't often do it in public. Mm -hmm. That's the difference, isn't yeah, it? That's a difference. It does happen in private. Yeah. And, and, now, and, and also, there are now more media outlets where you can sort of do things. Joe Gersh sitting over there, Bruce Schreiner, Bruce is with the AP and Joe's with the CJ. They can't write columns like this or stories like this where they have a lot of confidential sources. But now there are publications that are reputable that'll write more. And, and you can get out there that this sort of you know, hand slapping took place. But it, it doesn't happen very often with the name on the record. You know, you, you rarely will see a Republican elected official ever criticize um, Sarah Palin publicly, but there's been loads of articles of criticizing her privately. Obviously, the Congress has figured out that the American people uh, don't like this, this level of discourse, whether it's better or worse, whatever, but coming out of the shootings in Arizona, Congress has figured this out. The question is, how long will it last, and is this just a show? If history is any guide, it will last about a month. And what we're going to see, I think, unfortunately, it would be, be nice to have this era of good feelings uh, laid out for the next two years, is there are going to be some incredibly polarized debates in the next two months, notably over spending cuts and the debt ceiling. And there are serious differences between the parties. These are go-to-the-wall issues. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're going to have go-to-the-wall issues so soon. Uh, so I suspect that it's going to dissolve pretty quickly, although I still think the words will be more carefully chosen. I don't think you're going to have anybody except maybe Michelle Bachman, and fortunately for that perspective, Alan Grayson's gone from our side. But Anthony Weiner's still there, so we've got, uh, I mean, you've got a few outliers. I think beyond them, the tone will be very different and the words used will be very different. We won't be challenging, as Michelle Bachman has done, the patriotism or the un-Americanism of uh, people from the other party. It will be much more policy related. I think.